Tim Sandal here, and um, what I've got here is a glass petri dish. So you don't see as many of these these days, and this one's from the um, well, I think it's from the 1950s. Um, so it's um, made of glass. So the petri dish um, is a small glass. Or plastic container used for growing bacteria and other microorganisms and it was named after the um, German bacteriologist Julius Petrie uh, and Julius Petrie lived uh, 1852 to 1921 and he used this shallow circular glass dish with a loose fitting cover to culture bacteria and other microorganisms. So because it's named after Petri, then the Petri dish should always be written with a capital P. So Petri uh, developed the Petri dish in the late 1880s whilst uh, working for Robert Koch. And um, this was a series of uh, nesting dishes. In other words, you could like, stack them on top of each other. And so they could be a vessel for the uh, nutrient medium. It was like a nutrient rich um, gelatin uh, mixed with um, agar that, that uh, Fran Hess developed. And um, this created space for uh, bacterial fungal growth and um, also protected the Petri dish from contamination. The first uh, description of the Petri dish was in a short research paper uh, published by uh, Robert Koch. And this was, uh, I won't say in German, but the English translation is Methods for the Study of Pathogenic Microorganisms. And this described uh, the methods for the culture of, of, of microorganisms as part of those initial forays into diagnostic bacteriology. So the uh, first uh, petri dishes made from glass were um, fashioned from borosilicate glass and the main company that was producing these was the Corning Glass Works. Initially they were a type of glass that was given the name of Non-X, N-O-N-E-X. Um, and these were not quite as uh, robust as would be optimal. So um, further work was undertaken and the lead was removed from uh, Non-X, which um, made them far tougher. And this actually became a glass, uh, a form of glass known as Pyrex. So the predominant application was in cooking because the PY of Pyrex was... Um, supposed to be uh, an, an allusion to pies and pie making. Um, and this was the initial wave of, of Pyrex, but in 1916, um, uh, the company also shifted into the manufacture of Petri dishes. And um, these remained the predominant type of Petri dish until we get into the 1960s. And the glass Petri dish was commonplace until the mid 1960s when advances in plastic injection molding technology led to the kind of clear uh, polystyrene based plastic dishes that are more commonplace in laboratories um, today. Um, and these plastic dishes are about half the weight of the, of the, of the glass ones. Um, and by the mid 1970s, the, the cost of these plummeted as um, the use of um, plastics made from crude oil um, became more achievable to scale. The interesting thing is that um, the Petri dish remains largely unchanged 
And um, in the 1980s, it was kind of standardized um, in terms of size and uh, dimensions. So we had the nine centimeter plastic Petri dish. And this was advanced by a company called uh, Phoenix Biomedical Products, who were based in Canada. And they um, basically set the standard for the polystyrene Petri dish that was then copied by most other suppliers. Um, so what we now use today for diagnostic testing in medical, industrial and research laboratories is very much based on this um, model. But interestingly, the glass Petri dish is making a little bit of a comeback. And this is because the ability to recycle it. So we could be seeing more of these um, back in our laboratories as we attempt to create a more sustainable and um, circular economy. So here's to the uh, Petri dish around 140 years ago. So um, time marches on, but um, our reliance on these remains as it was. I'll be seeing you.